Well, hello, all you beautiful people. It's me, your host, Stefan Sitani. And I am coming in so soft today. I'm coming in in a gentle whisper because guess what? We've got family in town. That's right. My wife's sister, brother, and child are all in the door in the room next to me. And I don't want to wake them because they're sleeping. So I am just working after hours, burning that midnight oil. And it is scalding me right in my eyes and soul because I am so tired. I'm so tired. I didn't realize how much work it is to take care of a four-year-old. And there are four of us, four adults, but he wants to play tag with me. So tag, I will, but I don't, I don't take it easy on him. I run fast. I don't care. His little legs are going to have to grow up. That's what he's going to have to learn. All right. So I give him the hard lessons. That's who I am. And I'm going to give you guys a hard lesson too. And that is you should buckle up while you're listening to a comedy advice podcast because things get bumpy. Yeah. We've got a special guest, Jared Freed. He's an amazing comedian. He has a new ish special out on YouTube for free that you can watch socially distanced, of course. And he's also going to be in town at the Tempe Improv. All right. Yeah. He's going to be in Phoenix this weekend. Link will be in the show notes. So you can go buy those tickets. Also, he's got three podcasts, not one. No, not two. No, three podcasts. And they are all delicious, each and every one. So dip your fingers in each one. Wash your hands before you go into the next one or maybe just have like a lemon sorbet as a palate cleanser between each but they're all delicious so have at it just gobble them up and don't forget to gobble mine up don't forget to gobble me up i like to be gobbled up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already leave a review on apple podcasts and also come to see me live this tuesday aka tomorrow at the house of comedy link will be on the show notes for that too and then i'm gonna keep it short because i am pooped so i'm gonna leave you guys with a big hug and let you know that you are special and i love you so much i feel like it's more impactful when i whisper it it's great all right guys well here's the episode well hello everybody and welcome to another episode of a comedy advice podcast my name is stefan Sitani joining me today. Very special guest, comedian, and podcast host of the Rose Rehash, the You Up podcast, and the J Train podcast. Everybody welcome Jared Freed. Boom, boom, boom. Clap, clap, clap. I'm here. Thank you so much for having me. Excited. Oh, I am pleased as punch to have you on. And just, it's, it's been an amazing journey as I have plunged into the depths of Freed. And Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, you've got so many amazing things going on. You've had your own your own solar system with content that just orbits around, has its own. Uh, <laughs> am I sorry? Am I boring you already? This is not no, not at all. Start. It's I, this, I, I'm, I apologize. I take I yeah. I do a lot of things. I um, that's probably due to a lack of confidence in some way. Um, you know, I just want one. Then to me, uh, they um, when I started doing comedy, I was like, I kind of admitted to like there's a whole world on the internet where i don't have to wait to be cast in something or i don't have to wait to be for someone to go you're the next thing kid and i can put things out there and like i might you know especially the type of comedian i am i like i like to work stuff out i like to write and go on stage and hear how it felt to you know hear how it sounded and feel how it say i feel how it like feel how it sounded feel how what it felt like to say some of the things the jokes that happened so the internet is like the great place to do that as well you know it's a stage at all times in the day so i've been writing stuff and then i started podcasting and then as people see you know for momentum people see you doing stuff they're like how about this thing what about this thing and things accumulate now i'm just never shutting up all day long well, I love to hear the sounds of your voice reverberating in my ear pods because it's just great content after great content. I mean, I, I know I might not seem like a guy that's into The Bachelor, but your mm. Rose rehash is fantastic. I, uh, I haven't seen The Men Tell All yet, so I'm curious well, to see. 
The men tell all, I didn't do a Rose Rehash on YouTube. I, I kept it to just the live stream on Instagram, but the, it was the mental. It, it, I was surprised by how quickly it moved. I, I liked that it was like a, it was a quick, you know, it's like one of those like books that you're like, ah, it was a quick read, you know, like I, I like the mental all episode because there's just fun and stupidity throughout, which is where I come. That's, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did dip in because my wife, she was watching it while I was working. So I'd go down for a cup of coffee or something and I'd see it and I saw things it, to me. I felt I'm not a guy that really likes conf confrontation and mm. seeing, I think there was an argument between, I don't even know their names, the, the pizza guy and the guy that got served on Peter and Will. Yes. Peter and Will. And, uh, I felt like, you know, when you're, you're ready to argue and you get a little, your blood starts to boil. And I just started getting heated thinking mm. like, oh, am I going to be a part of this argument? What's going on? And <laughs> That's the beauty of watching the show. It, was, it gets you emotional. It, it hits you right in the feels. It really is. It's like wrestling, but with romance. Yeah, it's, I completely agree with that analogy. Yeah, so maybe, just like wrestling, I guess. Wrestling with roses, well, because, maybe that's. Well, because people, I use the wrestling one too because people are like, it's fake. And I'm like, well, everything you're entertained by is faked in some way. Like the idea that anything you, you're going, you know, we... We get on the phone for this podcast. We we do an amped up version of ourselves. It's not fake, but it's a version of ourselves. You know, yes. um, I compare the Bachelor to wrestling because it's like you know wrestling is fake, but they still have to take the bumps and bruises. They still have to jump off the top rope. So you still have to like go on a date with someone and see if you vibe with them. So the idea that it's like that they're like, well, they're not here to get married. Well, maybe they're here to meet someone. Maybe they're here for other reasons, and that's the fun of the show. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it keeps me coming back season after season in hopes of the most dramatic season yet. And I, I really enjoyed Rose Rehash. And, and you're, I have to say, throughout, I saw Socially Distanced, of course, mm. and the Rose Rehash, a lot, of, a lot of your content. And I have to say, I don't know if you do all your video edits or the um what is it the graphics or everything but i think they're phenomenal touches to to what you do um i Thank have to you. yeah i i liked the from the when you talk about the different when, when um what was it the home oh my god i don't know what it's called when they when they visited the home hometown of yeah the hometowns you had the little characters up there and then you had the 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 rose awards and the divorce papers and yes. it was just a, a, a wonderful garnish on the, the every wonderful comedian's dish. goal is to be good at editing and and production quality and that's every comedian's goal so um, i'm happy to enjoy no i you know i listen i i take whenever i put something out there i try to work with people that can help me you know attain yeah. kind of like the vision that goes with it like you know you don't want to look like you're just on local access you want it to look good and be fun and you know we used to do a lot of sound effects on the podcast and like those sound effects like i was like let's i, I was like those are fun let's make it happen when i do live podcasts we play music we play songs we you know whatever so it's all about creating like you know i'm not talented enough to not use everything at my disposal i have to use everything i can the chair the mic stand the mic the curtain I'm going to use everything to get out of there with a win. I love it. It's beautiful. And I have to say too, on this, on your special that you released on YouTube for free, socially distanced, mm -hmm. of course, the, one of the things that I thought was very cool is a small detail, but when there were the zooms into you, I don't know if it was pinned to your face. So as you're a very animated person, especially when mm -hmm. you're on stage, it was following you. And it was something that I don't know if I've seen on a lot of specials and it, it stood out to me. So I thought it really was a nice accent to the, the language of comedy that you were speaking. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, I worked with uh, great people on it and I'm, I'm happy with that special. I think it's uh, it was cool to be able to like tape on new year's Eve of 2021 you know, New Year's Eve 2020, like the worst year to like kind of commentate on that year. And it's all jokes about 2020, which are the social kind of awkwardness of 2020. Yeah. And I think that you had mentioned this too in the special where 
we seem very, there's not a lot of creative discussion because we seem very divided. Certain actions might just bucket us into certain groups. And I feel like mm. you did a really good job of being able to walk on that tightrope and be able to tell the jokes that made people laugh yeah. on, go ahead. Oh, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. I mean, like, it's just who I am. And I think there's a lot of people like me, you know, I, I think like, I think the there's no incentive to be um, in the middle. <laughs> and yeah. there's no incentive. Like there's incentive, there's actual incentive to being extreme. You find a group, you find people to cheer with, you find someone to argue with, you find someone to like get your rocks off with as far as like arguments and blood boiling and feel alive, I get that. When you're in the middle and you go, oh, I see that point and I see that point. Also, right. there's like, you know, because what happens with people who, you know, take each thing as they come and decide them based not on a party, but just on a human level, they go, oh, yeah, this is I'm just trying to eat, sleep and have sex and and provide for my family. So when you're that person, then someone says, don't you think, you know, when someone gets revved up about stuff, like, don't you agree? Don't you disagree? And you go, well, I, there's no real reason for me to even get involved. <laughs> like none of these right. things help me eat, sleep, make money. Fuck. So why would I even <laughs> say? So, <laughs> so when you make jokes about it, it's interesting because it's a slower road because you see right now there's comedians that, you know, let's choose to go underground you know or you choose to go yeah. really really you know we're going to be teaching people you know like it, it's like i'm either going to teach you about this law that you should be passionate about or i'm going to teach you why those people making those laws are crazy animals and it's like i don't care about either of those things <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like and but you find a passionate base from that and finding the people that are like i just want to go out for a night it's harder, I think. Yeah, I agree. I, I think you marked it beautifully too when you were talking about you spent some time in Florida, your parents are there, New York, and you were saying that Florida is kind of like, or New York is kind of like that friend that goes to therapy twice a week in terms of COVID protocols. Mm -hmm. Florida was like the friend that was on cocaine, and you want somebody that is in the AP classes, but also goes to parties. And yeah, I want that person. The one you're like pumped to see them. You know, they don't go too hard. You want them in a leadership position. You like you want the class president that you hang out with to be in charge. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that, that was great. Awesome. Well, we're going to go ahead and get into some advice. So um, I got some questions here that fans have submitted or I found on Reddit. Before I jump into the questions, Jared, I actually have an inspirational quote to kind of juice us up, get us nice and inspired, get those. Love a quote. Beautiful. I, so I'm going to jump into mine, but before I do, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that they like to reflect on if they're having a down day or trying to get inspired. I've been saying this my since probably five years ago. The last five years, I've been saying this, we write to edit. Everything you put down on paper, it's not a finished product. You're writing it just to edit it. So that's my quote that I say as much as possible. Because I used to like tell, like my, I lived with my younger brother and we were living in an apartment. And I remember I would like try and be like, oh, I got this joke idea. And if he was in a bad mood, he'd be like, that's stupid. I'm like, nothing's stupid. We write it to edit it. Maybe it's going to get us to the next thing. So whatever you do, as far as writing or whatever you're on, you're on to, just because you wrote it down doesn't mean it's over. That's beautiful. And the way that I take that as somebody that, I don't know if perfectionist is the right word, but just somebody that tries to edit in my mind saying, oh, I don't want to write because I don't feel like I have anything there yet. It's a nice mm. push to be able to say, okay, just write it down. You can edit it later. But yeah. if, if you get it down, then you've got something and then you can mold it into to something funny or whatever expression or attitude you're trying to strive for. So that's great. Absolutely. That's great. That's a beautiful quote. Uh, so I've got one here. It's actually not by any person whatsoever. It's by a robot. And okay. the robot's name is Inspirobot. 
So if you go to inspirobot.io and you just click through the power of AI, it just takes some of the wisest words known to man. I don't know where it reaches, but it mashes them together for an inspirational quote. I Have I heard this before? Has this been in the news lately? Like that someone, maybe I was listening to a podcast while I was sleeping where these like robots can now like make like the best quotes you've ever heard. Okay, that might not be an Inspirobot. Maybe that's 2.0 okay. because okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read this quote and then you can tell me, we can reflect on it, see what it means to mm. us. But um, Inspirobot this week says, food poisoning, close your eyes and get it over with. Okay. Yeah, this might not be the the bot I was thinking of. These are not the, these are not <laughs> the bots you're looking for. Um, it, it definitely. Uh, it, it I, wrote, yeah, how does food poisoning get in there? I I don't I know. That's the I, noun and the Mad Lib that they're creating. That's probably it. And I think Inspirebot wrote this one to edit because I think there's some editing that needs to be done to this one. <laughs> But I mean, you know, food poisoning, it, it's kind of like sometimes we have those things that are to-do list every day. We've got some stuff and maybe there's some stuff that we don't want to do, but we got to do mm. it. Maybe you just kind of close your eyes and get it over with. And yeah. that that's our food poisoning of the day. I think it's that's swallow right. your frogs is one of the the phrases, isn't it? Or is that a, is that a regional thing? Swallow your frogs. Like just do it is that is that the nike started as swallow your frogs and like, that was it instead of a swoosh it was actually a frog leg yeah, and frog yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i think that that's what it meant to me that's how i okay. interpret it all right now that i feel like we're nice and inspired we can jump into the questions jared let's do it excited okay so this first question is from reddit it says <clears throat> my friend is trying to overcharge me for artwork. I just moved and have been looking to fill empty wall space with original art. I wanted to save money and can be encouraging to any of my artistically gifted friends. I've had a handful of friends make paintings for me and we usually calculate the cost of the materials and I'll slap on a hundred to three hundred dollars depending on how big it is. Just taking a step back from that, that, that seems to me I've filled my house with some artwork but that seems like a little expensive. I don't know if you have I mean, you've got a nice jacket I, hanging. Well, I I think, uh, as my dad always said, it's worth whatever someone will buy it for. So the idea Fair. that this, like this person right now to me, who are they to say what the markup is on someone else's art? You yeah. know, I, I think they're coming in with their own preconceived notions of someone else's artistic worth and they might be off. I, I just had a situation recently. Um, oh. I get a text from this guy who is a friend of a friend. I've done charity shows for this friend before. So he texts me, hey, I'm friends with so-and-so. Um, I just, um, I'm doing a company sh sh uh, holiday party. And I was wondering if you were free on this date. And I wrote back, I'm actually not free. If you can move the date, if you have another date in mind, I would love to be able to do the show because Holiday parties. It was a corporate party. It was for a business. I go, this is a money opportunity. And, I'm, you know, this is the time of year for comics. I mean, you know, that people yeah. are like, I want to do a, it's a big time to make some extra dough just from people right. being like, I want to do a holiday party. So I go, yeah, I'm, I'm down. Um, I go, if you can switch the date, I'm down. He goes, he goes, Hey man, I can't switch the date, but if you know anyone else that would want to do it, I'd love some recommendations. And I said to him, I go, now, and he's a friend of a friend. So I was like, hey, man, sure. um, <clears throat> I um, I go, yeah, let me help you out. You know, whatever. I wrote back, um, what kind of, what are you looking for? Is that, do they have to be clean or do they have to be clean-ish? Right. And um, what's your, and I go, what's your budget? And, you know, because now I'm trying to figure out which friend I would feel comfortable saying, hey, I have a gig for this much money, this type of material. You, right. You know, now my brain is working and I'm doing some legitimate work for this person I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just in, in thinking about. It. And it's like, and 
I, um, he goes, well, what do these usually run for a th 30 minute set? And I was like, I go five grand. And I was like, that's what I would want. And he was like, he wrote back for, a th he goes for a 30 minute thing. And I, you know, at that point I go, yeah, LOL. And he's like, yeah, I think you're out of our budget, whatever, like, whatever. And I, it, the conversation went on and I, I, I was like, yeah. um, and it's just interesting to me. It's like, it's okay if you don't want to pay that price, but when you refer to it and you put a, your own emotional state and your own thing on it, it's like, oh yeah, for a 30 minute thing. Well, then you do it. You should do the 30 minute thing and pay yourself what you think you deserve for that 30 minutes. And that's okay. I mean, if he said the budget was $200, I wouldn't go for a 30 minute thing. I would go, okay, I can find you a $200 comic, you know? Right. So, right, right, right. So it's, you know, to me with money, it becomes emotional and you have to try. And I don't even think this person knows they're being emotional, but they are. They're actually putting their preconceived notions of someone else's worth onto the painting. If they're, if they think they're being overcharged, then why don't you counter with a better offer and let that person say no to you? That's, <clears throat> that's very true. We haven't even gotten to the price that the, sorry. We, yeah. But, I, I don't but, know. I, I don't need to know the price, the way they speak about someone and then you're worth, right. I can already tell that they've, they've come in with the wrong perspective. Something yeah, we don't even what someone will buy it. for. Yeah. We don't even need to paint the whole picture. It's already been <laughs> done. For, Pun for intended. A large, well, yeah, exactly. Not not to put a broad brushstroke over it, but I feel like <laughs> they're yeah, exactly. So, man, I feel like you kind of answered it already. You just saved us a whole <laughs> bunch of time and reading the whole question. No, that's great. Listen, that's great. I told you, people come to me for advice all the time. I don't, I don't know why. I can see. Well, I do. I definitely see. You've got the right <laughs> equipment here. Damn, man. Well, uh, yeah. Um, that was great. That was beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Moving, moving on to the next question. This is, what are good addictions to replace bad ones? I've been drinking heavily every week for the last five months, and it's affected my mental health and ability to work. I've drastically cut down this week to only two drinking days, and I only had five drinks on those days, which is extremely good for me. I feel really low now, though, and anxiety is through the roof. I'm wondering if this is normal when people cut down, but also, what can I replace it with? I have an extremely addictive personality, but need to save my declining mental state. Are there any healthy addictions I can pick up as a replacement? This is a tough one because it sounds like, you know, they're trying to come to terms with maybe if they have a drinking issue and maybe this isn't the best place to like go with that question. You know, maybe speaking to a therapist, someone, a professional taking, you know, if it's taking over your life in a certain way and you're feeling anxiety, maybe it's time to talk to a, like a professional. Right, um, right. I would also say there's no such thing as like a good addiction, like, like, you know, moderation, right. Don't they, I'm, I'm repeating, you know, other people's words, but like moderation is a big part of life. And that sounds right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think like if he picked up a ping pong and he, and he was playing it so much that he couldn't afford his home or food or his family. I would go, yeah, that's a bad addiction. Ping, you know, anything can be a bad addiction. So I don't know if what like you'd just be going back and forth. Is. Yeah, yeah, like, I, and he says he's an extremely addictive personality. So like, I think that's adding an array of things. Like maybe it's like adding not one thing because one thing you can become obsessed with. Maybe it's becoming addicted to a schedule of many things. So it's like. Monday, like I think a schedule, like to me, I have a similar thing with drinking where I'm trying to do less. Sure. So I'm trying to figure out what the, the problem when you stop drinking and I've stopped before, like I've taken some time off where you just don't know what to do with the t extra time. You don't realize that the drinking is making you sleep in later. It's making you lazier. It's making you look at your phone more. It's making you stay out at bars like later. So how do you fill the time? I was actually, when I come to Phoenix, I'm doing the shows in Phoenix. I was like looking for a place to go golfing. I just want to take a golf lesson. It takes a while. You're outside. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. But I, there, but oh, sorry. I, I was just going to say, uh, just to put it out there, there are, I think more golf courts, 
that's not the right word. Um, golf lawns, golf things. Golf course. Golf course. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Per square foot in Scottsdale, Arizona than any other place in the country. Top golf is a good one too, but it's not mm -mm. real golfing. You just kind of drink and golf at the same time. So I don't know if. Yeah, that might not be a good option for this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this guy, definitely not. I think you kind of hit it though pretty well. And yeah, definitely see a therapist. Maybe that could be the new addiction, getting self-help. The other thing is habits instead of addictions. Maybe you could start to put in habits of, I want to learn how to brew kombucha. And then maybe you can start trying to figure out how to do that. Set an hour a day instead of drinking on research on how to brew some delicious effervescent booch. Yeah. And so that might be something good. Another thing, this might be a little more on the serious vein, but I heard about dopamine release when you do something with an addiction, like when you're drinking, when you uh, watch porn, when you are on your phone with social media, th there, there's just this huge loads of, that wasn't the right phrase for it, but you know the, these releases of dopamine and you want to have dopamine drips because you get addicted to that dopamine release. So try and do smaller things and, and get yourself less used to huge rushes of dopamine. Maybe... Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what a good drip is because I'm all dopamine all the time, but there <laughs> might be something out maybe, there. I, but I, I think that's like kind of, I think that's why maybe scheduling out a week of plants would help because then it's like, okay, Monday is my day where I watch a movie. Tuesday is a day where I go hiking, you know, or go to the gym or, you know, and yeah. Saturdays I golf and Sundays I you know, I go, go karting. I don't know what it is, but maybe if he scheduled these things out, then it's not an all or nothing play. Now he's got a, like a day of the week for everything. It's like, you know, like the specials menu, like Mondays, we got chicken cacciatore and, you know, so you're not eating chicken cacciatore every day because there's a new special we're working. Mm, man, you, you make it sound appetizing. That's a great, <laughs> great idea. Awesome. Well, last question we've got here. It is my girlfriend and my guy best friend going on a trip alone. So this upcoming summer, my guy best friend and my girlfriend of almost two years is going on a trip that I wasn't invited. They will be gone for three weeks and just them two are going together. They are planning on sharing a room together with separate beds. My girlfriend used to like the guy she is going on the trip with. I mean, I trust them, but should I be a bit worried? I don't want to not let them go, so I don't feel bad. If anyone has any advice, please let me know. It's not about letting them go. It's about understanding why a trip was planned without you in the first place. Like, it's not, you know, letting them or not, they're going to do whatever they're going to do because they're adults. But it's, hey, right. I'm a little, you know, I'm a little upset I was not included in this plan. Um, why was that? I, I would have more questions than, and they could be questions to be like, hey, I just, they're all, what this person has to admit is that they have their own feelings and their feelings come first for them. And hey, I feel upset knowing that you two are planned a trip without me. Why? And I think that's going to get you your answers. Because if my girlfriend was like, well, I don't want to like traveling with you. I'd rather travel with this person. I'd go, then maybe I need to take that into account of whether I should be in a relationship with you. Like, like this is one of those things that like my best friend's going on a trip alone with my girlfriend. People go, they don't even let you finish the story. They're like, like I, I when I heard you say this, I was like, this is a very big, um, this comes from Reddit. Yeah, this comes from Reddit. So like, this is like a Reddit type question because people go, it's a very like, Oh, it's scandalous just on the outside. I yeah. believe everything can be true. I think everything can be true. I think a good relationship can have a girlfriend go uh, on a trip with my best friend. I, I believe that can happen. I don't think it happens a lot. I don't think I would enjoy it, but I do believe it can happen. So it, just like in the same way, like you can meet someone in all the ways at the market, at the, train at the on a flight on a dating app there's you everything has happened and will happen that doesn't mean 
it's should happen in every scenario for everyone. So if this person wrote in and was like, hey, my best friend's going on a trip with my girlfriend and it's because they love this one museum and I hate the museum and I don't even want to go. Like, that's a different story, you know, and they're, you know, they're going to sleep in separate beds. And I, I just feel weird because I've been judged by my family for them doing it. I would go, well, you seem to have an understanding of why this is all happening. This person yeah. never explains the why, you know, like I remember like my, I dated this woman and I liked her a lot, but then she had this friend and I was like, how did you guys meet? She's like in an elevator. I'm like, well, that makes me feel a little weird. This, I don't meet people in elevators. I was like, is he, is he straight? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's, he met you because there was an attraction of some sort at first. I, that might be gone now, but like we have to admit to meeting in an elevator is a romantic thing that people who don't you know like i'm not just meeting people in elevators especially in new york city like we're just like like people are avoiding conversations every day so oh yeah yeah when, when i worked in manhattan i tried to avoid eye contact to everybody in the elevator it was just yeah it especially because i was usually the one that was like hold the door please and trying to get in at the last moment so i was <laughs> exactly that guy. but yeah but no you're, that, you're right that's the thing where like if he if like if my, the girlfriend at the time was like, well, we've known each other since like middle school. We actually dated in middle school. And then we, you know, we actually dated in high school or college or whatever it is I go. And then we broke up. It really wasn't a relationship, but then we stayed in touch and they're actually really like good friend now. I go, okay, I get it. Like that, that, but when someone has no, if they're just like, we planned a vacation, then I would go, you didn't think of to invite me. And no, we didn't. Well, do you want to date someone? Then you have to ask yourself, do I want to date someone who wouldn't think of me for a vacation? I would, I, me personally, I'd be like, no. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's just pretty symbolic about the priority in which they put, they might forget you if you guys are trying to catch an elevator together. They yeah, might just shut the right. door right on you. Yeah, they might not even get you a Christmas present or Hanukkah present or birthday present. Just, I mean- whole slew of things yeah it, it doesn't make um sense to me but i can see how i think they need to ask more questions i appreciate that yeah i, I submitted the question so i'm glad you uh, were able to help there no i'm kidding i did not submit the question <laughs> awesome well jared that is the end of the podcast first off thank you so much for taking the time really appreciate having you on of and, course thank um, you for having me this was fun Oh, good. And and I also am really excited to have you, uh, well, to see you in Phoenix uh, coming up the, was it the 18th, 17th through 20th? I'm going to be there the, I am there the 18th and 19th. 18th and 19th. And I'll have the link in the show notes, but bundled with that link, I want to have many more for all the places that people can follow you, find you. And uh, what else have you got going on? Um, I am doing shows all over jaredfree.com, but Instagram is where everything is. Like that's where all my stuff is. And, and at Jared Freed on Instagram, just follow me there. I post my stories. I yell at the bachelor. I do podcasts. I give advice. I talk about dating. I put up as many funny things as I can a day. So just follow me there. That'd be cool. Beautiful. Thank you so much for making it all the way through. You are the most cherished of my jewelry because you guys I like to wear you like <laughs> no I'm saying like a Hannibal Lecter because I love wearing you no I don't but I like to talk about how cool you guys all are you're amazing people and I love you all and hey, you should support Jared support me come see us live at the comedy clubs link will be in the show notes and don't forget to have a great rest of your day, rest of your night, rest of your week, and rest of your year. Happy holidays. Ho, ho, ho. You guys have an amazing time. Whatever you're celebrating, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, I hope you guys have a white Christmas. No, uh, or like, you know, a gray Hanukkah, you know, whatever color and whatever holiday. I hope you have it. All right, guys, big old smooch on the gooch. Bye-bye.